I'm serious, dude. What do y'all think about this man? Hey, baby. Hey, baby. Get some bubbles over this. I'm so. Why, baby? Get some bubbles Study long, study wrong. Hi Trader, Tina here once again from shortmeetina.com with my daily recap. Today is Thursday, so as always I want to say happy Thursday. Hopefully the day isn't too bad, hopefully you're having an awesome day. Alright, so before we get into a recap of the overall markets in typical form, I would like to welcome you. So if this is your very first time, meaning you've never heard a Short Me Tina video ever in your life, this is your very first time tuning in, I want to say welcome do me a solid do us a solid in the comment section drop us a comment let us know your name say hi let us know how you found us uh, if you are returning i'd like to say welcome back also in the comment section drop your name you can say hi let me know how you're feeling today generally speaking i usually say hi back i take the time out to respond to everyone not necessarily in that day but i usually always respond all right so welcome uh so let's get underway with a recap of the overall markets right now. What you're looking at is the S&P 500, the SPY daily chart, dating back to around 2017. So I don't want to rehash too much of the things that I've been saying for the past, uh, two, uh, I'm about to say two years, the things that I've been saying for the past year. However, if you would like more color on my thoughts regarding the S&P 500, you can listen to any video I've done, I want to say within the last year. I usually kind of, uh, not kind of, I spell things out rather clearly in my opinion. Anyway, so again, this is a daily chart dating back to 2017. Really quickly, in my opinion, the SPY has been trading within a range. Let's not pay attention to this uh, quote right now. Uh, so the range that the SPY has been trading in within the last two years, dating back to 2017, we can call the lower end of that range support. Uh, that comes in at around 260, the upper end of that range. We like to call that resistance or a wall that comes in at around 293 to 295. And you can see for the most part, the uh, S&P 500, the SPY has cycled within this range starting back in 2017, uh, more than uh, for the most part up until most recently, with the exception of what went on in December uh, to early January when the market just kind of capitulated and we lost something like 25 to 30 percent uh, from at the time the highs. Uh, and also too, most recently uh, the market broke out of this range around June to July. Very short-lived. It was only a few trading days before it pulled back around uh, eight or so percent. Since then a few things have happened. One, uh, the market has bounced around within a constricted range. Uh, for the most part, I want to say all of August, starting around like late September, most of August, that range 281.72 is the lower end, the upper end 294.24. I did maintain that if the market broke out of that range at 294 range, more than likely we would revisit um, all time highs. Uh, and that's exactly what happened today. In fact, not only did we revisit all time highs, we ended up actually surpassing all time highs, going as high as 302. 46. So I believe in the video that I did yesterday, I said there's three scenarios that can unfold. Uh, one being the market pulls back. We do not retest all-time highs. That was scenario number one. Scenario number two is re we retest all-time highs and we pull back essentially a double top. Or scenario number three, we retest all-time highs and go on to achieve new highs. That is what happened today on, I want to say, average volume. We closed at 301. Uh, well, I see a quote here of 301.36. Uh, so essentially, looking at this candle, one can conclude or one can argue this is very much so what we call in the candlestick world a doji, which essentially means uh, a tug of war all day between the bulls and the bears uh, for for the final um, outcome to be essentially indecisive, right? So the uh, market went higher, it went lower uh, to essentially close for the most part in the same spot we opened up at, right? So we opened today at uh, 301.25, we closed at 301.36, like literally slightly up to the point for me that it's uh, insignificant. So I like to say that that is indecisive, indecisive in terms of the market and what it wants to do. So. Heading, I say all that to say, heading into tomorrow, 
it's going to be really curious or interesting to see whether or not we can reclaim all-time highs or that was just sort of like an overshoot that occurred today with us going to 302.46 and we're eventually going to pull back. Um, but so far, yes, I am still short. Uh, again, at this point, although the market has acted very bullish within the past uh, four to five trading days, in my opinion, I have no reason at this juncture to close my short and I've already formulated my trading plan. It was in place since, um, I want to say the ending of July, early August, uh, how long I've been essentially short the market. I believe it's been a while now. Anyway, so I'm still short, although we're sitting here uh, very much close to uh, all-time highs. Let's see how we end the week and let's see how we end the quarter. All right, what else do we have? All right, and then we have the IWM daily chart also going back to around 2017. I don't know why this uh, this chart looks so confusing to me today. Um, it's really not, but maybe there's just way too many stuff on there. I think I'm gonna clean this up uh, in a little bit. Anyway, so IWM daily chart dating back to 2017, essentially flat on the day, closed at 157.04, similar to the SPY, uh, in my opinion, very indecisive day. We essentially closed around the same uh, mark that we opened at today. So today's close, I see a print here of 157.04. We opened up the day at 157.18. We went as high as 157.90. Essentially, in my opinion, really getting close. If we can pull this down right here, right? Essentially getting really close to that resistance level of around 160. And these arrows here, okay? So if you're new, you might not know what they mean. These arrows, arrows here, it's about six of them. Essentially, um, denotes the times in which the market has tried to penetrate that 160 level to no avail. There was one time here back in May where we kind of overshot that 160 level. I think we got to 161 completely short-lived. I think the market only stayed out of that range, out of that 160 range for about two trading days before we had this massive pullback right here to support. Now again, uh, for the past two years, this chart has been relatively predictable, so much so that you could have played it in so many different ways, right? That spread between, just, just a side note, the spread between the support and resistance is around 11%. So um, you literally could have uh, played the market for the last two years, both on the long and the short side, uh, and, and would have made, um, I would say, a decent profit anywhere from like 8 to 11% round trip, right? So how would that work? Uh, you buy support right here, sell it resistance, you go short, uh, cover, go long, go short, cover, rinse, repeat. You can see it here. Uh, respected the channel, respected it, respected the channel here, six times over, respected the support level, six times over. Uh, and so today, again, going as high as 159, uh, pardon, 157.90, we got very close to that 160 level. Uh, so it, it's, you know, it's no wonder uh, today that the market, again, is indecisive because for a very long time, that 160 level has served as resistance and most people um, usually start to unload around that time. But, you know, we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. The market perhaps can rally, maybe even uh, penetrate that 160 level. Time will tell. Let's see. All right. So that's kind of what I'm paying attention to with the IWM. We're not really near support. We're closer to resistance. So I have my eye on that 160 level. Will we uh, retest it and overshoot like we did in the SPY? Or will that really serve as the seventh time that we've tried to penetrate resistance to no avail? Time will tell. Let's continue to monitor. What else? All right, so I spent about, in typical form, about eight minutes talking about the SPY and the IWM. So let's kind of go quickly with the rest. So ticker FAR, and I've done an analysis on this uh, particular ticker. I want to say today's the third day in a row. Uh, what are we looking at right now? A daily chart dating back to February of 2019. But I just want to focus in on the price action the last three days because that's where the excitement and volume actually came into play. So uh, I want to say the first day the rally happened, the stock was up something like um, over 100%. Then yesterday, I think we clocked in or put up around 60%. I did say that the stock was going to be on my watch list, which it was. But I said to pay attention to two things, how the stock acted in pre-market and exactly how it opened up, right? And so what happened today, obviously we're off north of 15%. I see a quote here of $14.12. Uh, today we opened up at 4 
$16.95. Yesterday we closed at $16.58. So the fact that we actually uh, opened up below yesterday's close should have already said, you know what, momentum isn't necessarily on uh, the uh, side of this particular ticker and maybe going long on this day would not have been the best thing, right? So what are we gonna pay attention to? Uh, obviously heading into tomorrow, next week, same thing. We closed at 14.12. You wanna pay attention to how the stock opens up uh, tomorrow. So if we open up above uh, 14.12 and we can sustain that, then that's a good sign in terms of being a bull. If we open up below, where are we closed at today at 14.12? That does not bode well uh, if you are longer looking to get long. Also too, if we take out today's low of 13.13, then things really are going to start to look not so good uh, for the bulls with ticker F-A-R-N. And that's kind of what I'm paying attention to, essentially how the stock uh, opens up and trades throughout the day. If we can um, hold above 14.12, that's good. If, we're, if we can't get above that level, that's not so good in my opinion. What else? All right, a quick update on ticker ZNGA. Uh, acted very bullish today, up about 2% on the day, closed at $5.88, going as high as $5.94. So we closed slightly above this sort of range we've been trading in since the pullback after the stock hit a uh, 52 week highs of around $6.38. So sitting here at 588, in my opinion, that's actually decent considering the stock is up north of 100% in less than one year, you have to expect your pullbacks. You're gonna, like, this is just what, ha this 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 is what happens. Let me show you. Uh, again, daily chart dating back, let's start around uh, 2018. You see you have your uptrend, slight pullback, uptrend uh, here, you have that slight pullback, uptrend or sideways action, then you have the pullback here, and now we're trading sideways. The fact that we're actually consolidating and trading on the upper end of the range, which is around here, that's actually, in my opinion, a good thing. So heading forward, I'm actually looking for Zynga to sustain this move. That'll tell me that momentum is actually shifting once again to the side of the bulls, right? So uh, for me, we need to, I would say we should stay above, uh, What's let's see, what's the low in this range? The low in this range is around, uh, five dollars and fifty cents at minimum we need to stay above that if we dip below that not a good sign but if we can stay above 550 in particular if we can at least make another attempt at getting to six and maybe sustaining that that is a good sign and uh more than likely our my end of year uh projection uh, which i my end of year projection of eight dollars uh for me looks still very promising promising and yes i am still sh uh about to say short why i'm not short singa at all uh, i am actually still long ticker z and gm all over the place anyway what else do we have all right and so let's uh wrap it up and i'll uh, round it out with ticker r u h and uh i am fumbling my words and so that is my cue to kind of uh wrap it up anyway ticker r u h n daily chart uh, going back to when it seems the stock ipo'd back in april of 2019 congrats to the bulls stock is up uh north of 50 percent on the day uh that's huge no matter which way you slice or dice it you can see above average volume new buyers stepping in closed at around uh, seven dollars today uh went as high as 18.38 so we overshot that resistance level we can say that comes in at around uh, seven dollars and ninety cents to around eight overshot that resistance level going as high as eight dollars and 38 cents before pulling back to close at seven so similar to take a fra and what you want to pay attention to if you're long looking to get long uh, to see whether or not this momentum will continue. You want, obviously, for the stock to open up above $7. If it opens up below and we can't get above relatively soon, uh, that is not a good sign. A good sign would be for the stock to actually open up above 7 and to sustain that move, right? It's always about sustainability. Uh, in addition to that, it would be nice if the stock can actually penetrate resistance like it did today, going over that $8 level this time sustaining that move. Again, all about sustainability. And I guess the third or fourth sign, I'm not sure where I'm at right now, that this is actually on its way to retest this high here of around uh, $12 is if we can see this actually uh, penetrate through that uh, $8.38 level, that high of today. You can see very, very little overhead. So I think if we can get above eight, hold that, more than likely this is going to take a trip to 12 and try to retest out what seems like 
all-time highs for this stock, right? So that's my take on ticker R-U-H, and that's it. Tina here once again from shortmetina.com. If you enjoyed any portion of this video, I'd like for you to do uh, three things for me. One, comment in the comment section. Are you in ticker F-R-A-N? What do you think about Zinc? I know there's a lot of Zinca fanatics out there. Comment in the comment section. I know you're watching these videos. Let me know what you think. Uh, what about ticker R-U-H-N? What about SPY IWM? Do you think I am crazy for being short the S&P 500? Are you going long now that we broke out or are you looking to initiate a short position? Again, comment in the comment section. Let me know how you're positioning yourself. That's the first thing. Uh, secondly, uh, I do videos Monday through Friday, every single day. If the stock market is open, you can expect me to upload a video. So if you do not want to miss any, ensure that you hit that subscribe button. Our goal right now for the end of 2019 is to get to about 2,000 subscribers. We're almost there. Uh, and lastly, lastly, my friend, I've been trading for well over 1.5. Yes, that is 15 years. So if you think you can learn anything from me, then definitely head on over to our website, shortmetina.com. Sign up, become a member. Thank you for listening, and as always, thank you for the support. I will With talk so to much you. drama in the LBC, it's kind of hard being Snoop D or Double G, but I somehow, some way, keep coming up with funky yeah, this shit like every single day. May I kick a little something for the G's and make a few ends as I breeze through. Two in the morning and the party still jumping cause my mama ain't home. I got sisters in the living room getting it on and they ain't leaving till six in the morning. So what you wanna do? They I got a pocket full of rubbers and my homeboys do too. So turn off the lights and close the door. But for what? We don't love them hoes. Yeah. So we gon' smoke an ounce to this. G's up, hoes down. Why you look up for the bounce to this? Lay back with my mind on my money.